Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'll be your host for this one, Jared Bronstein. And today we're talking about the giant ground sloth, which is scientifically known as the Megatherium. These guys are known to belong to the sloth, anteater, and armadillo family, and it's believed they went extinct as little as 10,000 years ago, possibly even 4,000 years ago. Before we tell you the shocking reason why they went extinct and how they would affect modern day life as we know it, make sure to subscribe, click that bell, and of course, stick around until the end for some comment replies. Hey guys, before we get into this one, I gotta give a shout out to Raid Shadow Legends. It's the only mobile game I'm willing to play and it's literally taken over. They have almost 15 million downloads in the last six months, but I'm sure that number will double in the next three months. Now, if you guys have been living under a rock and haven't heard about Raid, it's an epic dark fantasy done right. There's over 400 champions you can collect and personally customize. My favorite parts of the game is the fact that I could raid with friends in a clan. Raid also has PvP Arena where you could show off your skills. Of course, a million plus championship builds and a fully voiced story campaign, just to name a few. But best of all, it's free to play. Some extra cool features in the game are the multi-battle auto mode, where you can auto battle while you do other things. Focus on the fun stuff, not the grinding. Weekly tournaments and events where you can win extra prizes every week. From arena fighting to special dungeons, it covers all bases. There's also the new cool fusion event for Halloween, and you can get the legendary champion Harvest Jack. They've also added a ton of new champions, like Miscreated Monster and Madame Ceres. So why wait any longer? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and you will get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck and I'll see you there. So the giant ground sloth, they were big. As we know, most sloths nowadays are quite small. We're talking maybe three feet, give or take. About the size of a medium dog. Their ancestors, however, the giant ground sloth, well, they were much, much bigger. And if the name itself isn't a dead giveaway to their size, it's believed they were as big as 13 feet tall and four tons and walked on their hind legs. Now, some compare their size and weight to that of a modern day elephant. And unlike the modern day sloth, which can usually be seen hanging out in a tree, these guys lived on the ground. They too had massive claws and seemed to move quite slowly. Another similarity between the modern day sloth and the giant ground sloth is their diet. Although the giant ground sloth was very capable of slashing up a defenseless animal, it seems their diet mainly consisted of leaves, grass, and although there have been claims that it could have been carnivorous, that theory seems to still be argued to this day. This theory derives from the fact that their teeth seem to have been triangular with a sharp edge to them. There's also the argument that the part of the animal's elbow that the tricep muscles attached to was quite short, which is frequently seen in carnivores to optimize speed over over strength. However, this claim seems to have been disproven because these giant animals lacked carnassial teeth, which carnivorous predators are known to have. Aside from this, upon retrieving the giant sloth's manure, which has been found in various caves, there were no animal bones. This has led many researchers to call the idea that they were in fact carnivores to be unrealistic. So now that we know they mostly ate plants, although they were easily capable of clawing something up or even flipping it on its back and taking bites out of it whole, where were these things known to live? Originally, they roamed the lands which we now call South America. They liked wood and grasslands. But the most recent fossil discoveries, they've been found mostly in caves in North America. It's believed they inhabited South America around 35 million years ago and then migrated to North America somewhat 8 million years ago. But some research believes these things lived in North America as recently as 11,000 years ago, in South America 10,500 years ago, and some on the West Indian Islands about 4,400 years ago. Most were believed to roll around in packs, but some seem to live in caves alone. And the real reason for their extinction? Not the Ice Age, like most prehistoric animals. It's believed humans actually hunted and killed them off. Although the Ice Age, of course, did a lot of the work from what was left, it's strongly believed humans hunted these things, most likely for meals. The types of plants the giant ground sloth lived off of are still plentiful in today's day and age, which crosses out the notion that they died to a lack of food supply. Of course, as we do more research on these guys, we'll find more information out about them. But given the information we do know now, how would their presence affect our modern day society? If the giant ground sloth lived in the same areas it's believed to have inhabited 10,000 years ago, they would most likely live in the grasslands in South America, more specifically parts of Argentina, western Venezuela, and northeastern Colombia. They could also live in the south of the Guavia River, Amazon River Basin, and Orinoco River. In North America, it's quite possible these things could live in northwestern Canada, California, New Mexico, Arizona, and in caves in the likes of Missouri, Minnesota, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee, where their fossils or manure has been found. But having these things live in the wild wouldn't be such a danger to humans, physically of course. Their presence would certainly attract hunters who would want to sell their fur, claws, teeth, and who knows what else. As previously mentioned, humans are believed to be a big reason these guys went extinct. They were slow and big, so a large, slow-moving target wouldn't be much trouble for a hunter with a far-ranged weapon, such as a bow, or in today's day and age, a gun. 
But if we had packs of these beasts traveling around eating the leaves and fruits of our trees, that may have an impact on the entire ecosystem in these grasslands. As we know, less food for other animals could lead to extinction of some animals and overpopulation of other animals, or insects. Given their size, these things most likely had quite an appetite. But they wouldn't necessarily eat all the time. It took them a while to digest their food, which is why it's believed they would sit in caves. A form of protection, but also a good place to just sit and let your food digest. Of course, given their size, other animals may try to take them down as a form of food for the family. An example could be a group of hyenas. If a pack were able to surround a single giant ground sloth, they would definitely have a good chance of turning it into a feast. But on the other side, the giant ground sloth may turn into a carnivorous animal after defending itself. If the animal is already dead and in front of you, why not give it a try? However, it may not be as black and white as that. It's safe to say the giant ground sloth has had to defend itself previously. And just because it killed another animal, it may not eat it because it already knows what it likes and doesn't like. So again, this leads me to believe it wouldn't be much of a threat to humans. They wouldn't come into our city and attack us. But their presence would certainly throw off the entire ecosystem. And farmers may see some of their crops being eaten by the wild giant ground sloth that happens to stroll through the village or town. Deers, rabbits, armadillos, among other animals whose diet mainly consists of plants and herbs, would see a decrease in food. This could cause their populations to decrease as well. Now to us, this may not be seen as such a big deal. What do we need wild deer or rabbits for? Well, when you put it that way, you're right. We don't use them as part of our everyday routine. But the way the ecosystem currently is allows us to live the way we do. Even the slightest change in the way things are currently going have a ripple effect from top to bottom. With the decline of one or many populations of species comes an increase of their prey. This could lead to more disease among other probable causes. So all in all, to summarize, if the giant ground sloth didn't go extinct, it would mainly just affect those animals currently living in the grasslands of South and North America. At first, the human race wouldn't see much of a difference in our day-to-day -day lives. But over time, we would definitely see some changes. The presence of them would specifically affect farmers, and that in turn would affect those who buy local meats or produce. The change in the ecosystem would send a shockwave across the board. Depending on how it affects you personally would really depend on where you live, your diet, and which animals or produce you tend to consume. But like a handful of our videos, this isn't of any real concern. The giant ground sloth is long gone. Well, only about 10,000 years, or possibly 4,500 years or so, but still, not a concern of ours. For now, we can just enjoy the company of their distant relatives, the two and three toed sloths, who just hang from trees trees and look like they're always stoned. Now before we reply to some comments, I want to know if you guys could have one prehistoric animal come back, which would it be and why? Let me know in that comment section down below and of course, let us know some other questions you'd like to see on this channel. Alright, let's reply to some comments from the video, what if humans came from another planet? JP said if we came from another planet and came to Earth, I think I would go back because we don't seem to treat this one too good. Yeah, we're hands down our own worst enemy. Between like the climate change and pollution and all that, we, we just, we suck. So. It's definitely our fault. The immortal super being said, I believe we did. I think that we are a failed experiment that was created to fight for our creators, but loads of us kept killing each other instead. So they put us here on a failed experiment preserve. Well, I kind of want to know how you came to that conclusion. Um, I don't really know how to reply to that, but definitely an interesting theory, I guess. If you're watching this, let me know in the comments how you came to that conclusion. Just some guy without a mustache said, if humans came from another planet, then that explains why I only saw humans at Area 51. We are the aliens. But then who's running Area 51? Like, is it humans running Area 51 holding other humans? Like, that really wouldn't make much sense, would it? Does that also mean you broke into Area 51? Because you should have filmed that. That would have been interesting to see. Anyways, guys, that does it for this video. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. Make sure you guys are subscribed and click that bell so you never miss a video. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys like sloths. And let me know in the comments down below another prehistoric animal you guys would want to come back and why we'll see you guys again soon